For millions of years, mankind lived just like the animals. Then, something happened that unleashed the power of our imagination. We learned to think. To think about what is. to be gained is vast. Data is being generated, gathered, and measured at an exponentially accelerating pace. Properly harnessed, this information holds great power. It has been estimated that two-thirds of our brain is dedicated to the acquisition and analysis of visual stimuli. We are seers. We think best when we can visualize our challenges. Please welcome Hexagon President and CEO, Ula Rowland. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Don't procrastinate, don't articulate, girls get late, you just sit wait around. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hexagon 2012 in Las Vegas. And we can say it's really a warm welcome because it's 100 degrees out there. I'm quite happy to stand here in a dark suit while you are in shorts. And I'm really happy to say I didn't wear one of those green things. <laughs> I don't look good in green, I'm sorry. We, if you look at this auditorium, we're 3,300 people here today. We represent all kind of industries and various functions in our societies. Anything from utilities, communications, public safety, aerospace, automotive, oil and gas, energy production and so forth. And if we look at this venue, you all represent 76 nationalities. That's fantastic. And you can look forward to 29 thousand hours of sessions. Think about that for a while. Do you know how much that is? 
That's 3.3 years if we stay here and do it 24-7. Another thing that's fantastic is we got 60 sponsors here with us today, and they're showcasing their technologies in the technology center. And if you haven't been there, I really strongly urge you to go there because it's fantastic. And then we have a piece of bad news for you today. You know the old saying, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Not so anymore. This is a live broadcast, so think about what you're saying, what you're doing, and how you're behaving, because the people back home are watching you. They think we can wave at the camera and say, yep, we're really working. Now, the theme of this conference is think forward. We need to think forward in order to stay ahead. Let's look at some pictures of people that didn't think forward. I love these pictures. For example, if you build a bank balcony, you don't want to put it on top of a high-speed railroad track. Uh, look at this man. That's my favorite, the guy with the cash machine. That's a tough job getting cash nowadays. And we can joke about this, but un the underlying message is serious. The world is getting faster. Life is speeding up. You wake up at New Year's Day and you say to yourself, I got 365 days. I can do all these things I promised myself to do during this coming year. And what happens? On New Year's Eve, we've forgotten all about it, and really, we only got 220 days when we were promised 365. And the reason for that is twofold. There are two things happening in the world today, if you think about it. First of all, it's population growth. If we go back 200 years in time, that was the first time ever mankind was more than one billion people on this planet. Fast forwarding 200 years into today's situation, we're 7 billion people. So from 1 billion people in 1804 to 7 billion people in 2012. That's huge. If you think about it, the resources haven't grown at the same rate. So competition for resources like water, food, power, and so on, and land, is actually seven times tougher today than 200 years ago. The other thing that we need to remember is that uh, 15 years ago or so, we were 900 million people on this planet consuming 95% of the global wealth. Today, if we move forward, in 15 years' time, we're going to be two and a half billion people aspiring to a middle-class life. We want cars, we want mobile phones. Already today we have a billion cars on this planet. If the ratio person to car would be the same as in the United States, we will already this year have three and a half billion cars. So, we need to think forward in order to predict what lies ahead. We need to think forward in order to understand, measure and detect what's relevant. And we need to think forward in order to predict when change is happening. Sometimes we know that change is going to happen, we just don't know when. We need to think forward in order to see change as it's happening, to predict, to plan and move forward. And beyond that, we need to improve productivity over and over again. So, what is this magic X? What are we going to do about it? Because population is growing, we're all aspiring to middle-class lives, and we need to fix this somehow. And what is this magic algorithm or, or thing that can help us? Uh, move into a future that hopefully is good for all of us. Well, at Hexagon, we believe it's called actionable information, and that's our small contribution to these large problems. Actionable information comes in many layers, and let's dissect these layers. Uh, first, it needs to be multidimensional. 
It's much easier and it's proven that if you see a problem in three dimensions, you can actually assess what's going on much better than in a 2D environment. Secondly, it needs to be dynamic. We want to monitor actions. We want to see events as they occur. Thirdly, I think it needs to be context aware. Do you know who this man is? Do you know the importance of this man? How is he related to this man? Should they really be in the picture or is there something else that is even more important? Knowledge of what's actually going on. We also believe that it needs to be mobile because problems don't come to you. Or sometimes, actually, they do. And the fifth layer is real time. We need to be able to close the gap between action when things occur and reaction when we can fix the things. Then we can improve. So think forward. What we want to showcase for you today are a few examples that we have developed together with you, our customers, over the past 12 months. Thank you. Welcome, President of Hexagon Geosystems, Jürgen Dohl. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish you a very warm welcome here and uh, a good morning from here in the, uh, Las Vegas and wherever you look us from uh, with the Internet. A while ago, when I was thinking, what would I share here at Hexagon 2012, what we are at Geosystems doing, and what would be of interest to people coming to sessions from Intergraph, from Hexagon Metrology, from Leica Geosystems, from Zeta Imaging. And I have chosen, chosen safety. Safety is not an option. Safety is important to all of us. And safety is a topic where we at Geosystems making the world safer. And let's go right into the first examples, and it's not too long ago. The shore is stored. A ship too close to the coast. It's a drama. Several passengers died. But fortunately, many passengers survived. Fortunately also was that the ship was stuck on a rip, preventing it from drowning it down into the sea. But rescue divers had to go in, and nobody knew whether the ship would slide down. And that was when hexagon ge Leica Geosystems instruments were brought to the ship and measured points on the ship and checked whether it changed its position. This change was communicated to the commands of the rescue teams to make sure the divers are safe inside. There are changes, other changes, other changes which will happen from Mother Nature, but we don't know when. It's earthquakes. Earthquakes we cannot predict, but we can prepare to react fast in anticipation something would happen. This is the next example, an example of the Hinata Airport in Japan, where the management wanted to know in real time how the runway behaves when an earthquake comes. They 
introduced Leica GNNS systems into the runways, not one, an entire network, and an entire network that permanently records the positions and checks whether the runway is okay to be operated, even through earthquakes. And if the change is only that size, a couple of centimeters, airplanes can land. It's important. For those who are traveling a lot from us, would we not appreciate this additional information when we are cruising around such an airport and want to land? I truly would. Let's go to the next topic. When efficiency meets safety, when does efficiency meet safety? It's in mines. In mines, a mine is as more efficient as the slopes are steep. As steeper the slopes are, as more risk you have that you experience a landslide. Therefore, hundreds of total stations are installed in mines detecting millimeter movements in two kilometers distance. I brought you one example of a true measurement where we detect change over time. And it basically looks like this. It starts at the beginning, it's stable and safe, and then suddenly you see millimeter changes per hour, which turns into millimeter centimeter changes per hour. And that's when the landslide came. This landslide was as polite to announce itself 24 hours before. And I think everyone in this room now understands why accuracy matters. As more accurate you can measure the change, as earlier you see a change. And then you can warn, and then you can protect people in the mines. But it's not good enough to measure only. What we see and what we measure must be told. So people do the right things at the right time. And that is exactly when Leica Geo Systems meets Intergar. I brought you an example where we are involved in a project about the Three Gorges Dam in China, a big project from our Chinese organization working on that, where since years or years ago, the Gorges Dam, the Three Gorges Dams were built with our total stations. And now they are checked for stability with our total station. So you could say Leica Geosystems measures the world around us, while with Intergraph visualization and communication methods, we inform who needs to be informed. Managing risk and visualizing risk to people who don't understand measurements in detail. I don't go into much in details what risk are managed here because John Graham will talk about this in his session. But what I want to point out here is visualization is a vital part of what we have to do so people can make, make decisions based on our, dis on our measurements. And when we talk about visualization, I truly believe that the digital 3D world improves activity planning. Our world is 3D and by deficiency we mapped it in 2D, but it's going to 3D. And the digital 3D world is good to, or improves these activity plannings in plant applications or in city applications. And there is also Leica Geosystems involved. Leica Geosystems is involved in making the digital world real. What do I mean with this? If you have a digital world in which you want to plan, it better shows what the truth is, otherwise your plan is wrong. And so it's important to measure accurately, capture the reality, and then also it's important that you have a process that uh, is fast enough to analyze your data and present it. And here I have an excellent example out of the United States. There is a mapping program where, there's th where they map 3.4 million square kilometers of the US. It's the NAEP program, originally designed for agriculture applications, but today other departments of the US are using this for land use planning and for business planning in some cases. And let me bring you a bit closer to this project. and Let me turn this arena into an airplane with 3,000 people where everyone has a window seat and looks down from 30,000 feet down to Texas. This is an original image made from in the NAEP project. 
Northwest Group, a Canadian company, is a prime contractor. And they have the job with two subcontractors to fly 2.3 million square, uh, square kilometers in this project, and they will do this in three months. For the Germans here, this would be 6.4 times Germany in three months. In other words, 23,000 square kilometers per day. So Switzerland would be done in two days. So it's impressive how fast you can map today, but look on the quote which I brought to you today. The quote from John Welter from Northwest Group, he said, Jürgen, it's amazing. FedEx delivers 23,000 square kilometers at 11 a.m. to the office, and at 10 p.m. at the same day, these images are streaming over the internet. This we do eight times per day, because they have eight airplanes to operate, with six people and high-efficient workflow. I'm particularly proud on that one because several years ago, my team out of the Airborne Group partnered up with Northwest Geomatics to create this workflow, which reduced this processing time from weeks and months down to a couple of hours per day. It's truly really impressive. But we didn't stop there. We integrated a new technology, semi-global matching, which converts these images into the third dimension, so you can create the third time, you can create terrain models for entire countries, states. You see forests in 3D. You see infrastructure in 3D. Let's move on to the next example. Creating the digital world must be done from different views. Because from air, we don't see everything. So what is missing? It's missing the 2D information which we have in maps satellite images, airborne images, which we have. But airborne images, which look from the side to the houses and see the facades from the air, and street views, which looking from the street up to the facades, and inside views to model the inside of houses. And therefore, this together gives the view of the, three, the 3D world. I'm sure that many of you have those data somewhere in databases and then think, huh, how could I merge all these data together to visualize it better? And would it be not nice to stream it over the internet? And then you should, if you have these thoughts, then you should watch the next video. This video was created by a company called MyVR Software. It's a high-tech software company based out of Norway and joined the Hexagon family just 14 days ago. Welcome to this team. They have created a software which every one of you who has this challenge on having so data from different sources and want to merge them for a 3D view and then stream it over the internet, they have this technology to be integrated into your solution. This is truly thinking forward technology, which you can see in the expo. And with this example, I wanted to end my session and wanted to end it with a quote from Abraham Lincoln, who said, the best way to predict your future is to create this. And with this, I wish you a good thinking forward hexagon 2012. Thank you very much.
Please welcome Intergraph Security Government and Infrastructure President, John Graham. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Las Vegas to Hexagon 2012. I'd like to welcome our SGNI customers, but also all the other customers, clients, and partners we have across the Hexagon family. I think it's really exciting for our particular industries, for the people that are here to learn. We've got a lot of great information to share about SGNI over the coming days. But more importantly, or as important, is really to look across all the Hexagon divisions and what they're doing. We're spending a lot more time, you know, how do we intera interact and build products with other parts of Hexagon? And there's some exciting things that are coming, and you can see that in the tech park. Last year, when we were together, we talked about disasters. I talked about we were just recently uh, past the uh, earthquake in Christchurch, the tsunami in Japan. In Japan. And it, it was interesting, we shared how a lot of our technology and solutions was integral and part of helping to respond and manage those terrible situations. Now we're talking about thinking forward. And when we're thinking forward, we do need to think about protection and reaction, but thinking forward is about preparation and doing the right things with solutions. And that's what we're really you know, focusing on as we go forward. And, and you think about infrastructure, we build infrastructure, then we need to you know, maintain and manage infrastructure, then we need to rehabilitate infrastructure, and we also need to protect infrastructure. Let's kind of go forward and talk a little bit about this issue. This is a global issue. All of us have to deal with that. I don't care what industry or part of the world you're from. It's crucial to our lives. It helps to improve our lives. It helps to improve the, you know, the situation of developing economies. And it will talk about how each area, whether a developed country or a developing country, they all have different needs but a similar issue. Infrastructure is critical to all of us. And when you think about all the countries we represent, and Ula talked about 76 countries are represented here today. You know, in some countries, when we're talking about developing nations with growing economies, you know, there's the opportunity to build infrastructure, highways, water management systems, whatever it might be, dams, et cetera. If you're in a developed country, the challenge we have, and here in the U.S., one of our challenges, our infrastructure is starting to deteriorate. It needs to be maintained, upgraded. We also need to, in all situations, whether we're building it and or maintaining or rehabbing it, we need to protect it. Big problems, and it's a global problem. And when you think about some of the facts that are out there, in developing countries, 95% of all population growth in those countries will ultimately live in a city. That's going to increase demand for water, for power, for buildings, homes, basically supporting the lives of the people that are living and working there each and every day. In India, a thriving economy, growing, a growing population, an exciting country if you've ever been there, you know, they're going to spend a trillion dollars basically to build up their infrastructure, roads, highways, power, utility, all the things they need to support a rapidly growing economy. On a more sober note, if you look out over the last few years, a lot of the terrorist things we have had happened to us in different parts of the world have all been targeted against infrastructure, buildings, rail systems, transit, whatever it might be. It's something we need to also think about. So infrastructure is a very broad topic if you think about it from a life cycle standpoint. And I think that these big problems need big solutions. And that's what Hexagon is about. And it's where, when you think about what Jurgen was talking about on really the front end of measuring and managing and measuring, all those things are tied to a lot of the projects. We have similar projects where we're working together. And I'm going to share one of those with you. But it's a, it's a big problem. And Hexagon, I think, is a company that can really address a number of these situations. In Intergraph SG&I, so bringing it back home to our world and what we represent, we've been dealing with this for 40 years, working with utilities, working with local governments, working with water authorities, public safety organizations. You know, we've been focused on infrastructure management, mobile workforce deployment and management of the workforce that must maintain that infrastructure. And also, more as important and more important sometimes, is the critical infrastructure protection and what we do there. It's what we do and what we represent. And a lot of our sessions over the coming days are to address these types of things. 
Let's look at a few examples. Let's reach over to Ireland in Dublin, the Dublin Region Water Authority. You know, this is an organization that has, you know, rapid growing demands for, you know, the water resource. Actually, one of the challenges, I think, over the next 30 to 50 years is water will be equally important to oil. You know, it's something that's becoming a, a, a huge issue for us to manage and maintain. And it, the need for it's growing and how you manage it. At the same time, wastewater management regulations that were coming from the EU and from Ireland's government, you know, they had to do something, they had to, how do we manage this? And so they used Integraph's G Water technology solution to really help map the water network, understand how they would expand that network, and then be able to maintain, maintain the asset itself as they go and do things in a more efficient manner. This helped to reduce cost as they automated some of the processes and really helped them to kind of address their needs as they were focusing on infrastructure related to the water authority uh, in that particular area. Shifting over to the continent into Germany, looking at the power industry, EDOT on Bern had the challenge of, through mergers, ex you know, a lot of different systems and different teams of people and workflows. How do we bring that all together as they became a larger enterprise that had to address how they managed the power grid across that particular area? You know, their asset management issues were huge. They had six legacy systems. They had to figure out how do we bring that together? How do we address different data sets, different approaches to work, different workflows? They had 19 network centers to address this with. Using G technology, Genius and Geomedia, our combined solution, we were able to address and really provide them a solution that helped to really make it so that they could interoperate all these different disparate organizations more effectively helping to manage the infrastructure each and every day in their day-to-day -day operations. Moving to an example, it's just a local government. So we're addressing a lot of different industries here, infrastructure being the common theme. And Hamilton, Canada, you know, their issue was how do we do capital expenditures in a much more effective manner across multiple organizations, sewer organizations within the city and water. As, all, as well as road management and, and public safety. They need to look at solutions to really manage uh, the capital expenditures in a more effective manner. They didn't have as much money. It's one of the things I'll talk about this afternoon is the challenge of declining budgets in a lot of our customer areas. What they did was really work with our GeoMedia solution and our Canadian team to really simplify the workflows of all those different organizations that had different missions and different focuses area, but they were still part of the city of Hamilton. They needed to work more effectively together as they sat there and managed and responded to the customers and constituencies they were responsible for. Jurgen talked a little bit about China. It's a huge organization and huge projects really built around dams, and we're in the middle of that. And CISPDR is an organization that's been around 50 years. And of the 87,000 dams across China, 2,000 they're responsible for. They're an engineering firm, but they build things, they manage things around water, around dams, around power generation. And they do that on a broad scale, not just in China. They've actually done this in 20 different countries across Southeast Asia and other parts of the world. They also designed Three Gorges Dam, and you saw you're going to talk a little bit about that. Well, if you sit there and you talk about the tools to help you know, send, you know, manage uh, and, and monitor the dam and the status of it, there's also a lot of other things that need to be done. And this is what they asked SG&I to participate in, and this is what we started to touch other parts of Hexagon in a very strong manner, but they started to think about day-to-day -day operations. What kind of risk scenarios did they need to work with? Water pollution, what, what do they do? How do they respond? Do they have the right assets? How do they communicate? What happens if something happens to the dam itself? It, 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 does, it breaks, it, it has a fault. Maybe there's a terrorist attack. How do they respond to that emergency? All these different scenarios, they ask us to help them working with different organizations, how to manage the workflows, and then prepare the emergency response around these scenarios. And this is where we started to work a lot with geosystems and the tools they had, because a lot of their sensor technology and tools are integral to how we get information early uh, and effectively, and how do we then respond and manage, make decisions at the same time. This is really exciting to me, because this is where, as we spend more and more time with Hexagon, coming up on our second anniversary here in the fall, you know, we're starting to see a lot of synergy across the organization. We're still going to be very, very focused in sg and on our core industries, but we want to look at other parts of the Hexagon family of where there are tools and solutions we can bring in
to leverage and really provide additional value to the customers that we've been dealing with for the last 40 years. That's actually one of the most exciting things for, for my team and our people. And I think over the coming days, you're going to see a lot of that. Take the time to see what Metrology is doing or seeing what PPM and other organizations across Hexen are doing. It's a great opportunity for all of us. Have a great conference, and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President of Hexagon Metrology, Norbert Honka. Good, mor good, good morning, Vegas. Um, let's think forward with metrology. The world population is exploding. I don't need to tell you that, but we have to remind ourselves of this reality. Only if we are thinking forward, we can move forward. Natural resources have provided in the past freedom for growth, but they're becoming more scarce. And that is why advanced technology today must focus on new ways to find, to achieve more with less. We are comparing normally the digital world with the real world. We have zero tolerance for errors. This zero tolerance manifests itself that our customers are relying on us on increased quality to improve their throughput and to avoid their waste. But today, I would like to focus on four segments. Automotive, aerospace, energy, and medical. I will show you a couple of examples where we and our customer were thinking forward. Let's zoom into the automotive segment. More people want to travel, and most of them will travel by car. The car industry will produce or need to produce 75% more cars per year by 20. 30. Hexagon Metrology Technologies could help the automakers to build cars faster, better, and with higher quality. Presently, 70 million cars are produced. We inspect them, not only the engine block, what you see here now in the video, but as well crankshafts, cylinder heads, transmission, and turbochargers but everything has to fit. There have been big improvements in the quality of the engines, thanks as well to metrology. All car makers are thinking now forward. They are looking at new types of powertrains, su powertrains such as hybrid cars and battery cars. And we have new technologies to meet the challenges. Now, we are inspecting as well car bodies, either with our horizontal arms or 
with our new white light technology. Forward thinking is to inspect every car body, to collect points, point cloud, to make sure that all parts of the car will fit together correctly. Only the white light technology is fast enough to do that. Please see in this report or the visualization of data you just saw, you want to see green. That means go. Red means stop. Now, it's all about speed. NASCAR cars can go up to 190 miles per hour. Most NASCAR teams and even NASCAR itself is using our ARM technology. The ARM is used to verify all but is to verify all, uh, all that all teams are following the design rules that were put in place for safety reasons. Some teams, like our partner, Henrik Motorsports, are using our equipment to determine how to adjust the car to get a competitive edge in speed and in handling. So it's all about winning. Congratulations, by the way, to the Sunday win as well. I assume that most of you came by plane. And for, our, for all of us, safety comes first. If you think that a car is a very complex uh, thing, imagine a plane. It exists out of 360,000 components. And it's made in a lot of different production facilities around the world. Now, let's have a look at the assembly of an airplane body. There's a huge section which you have to align. For this, you need a long-range metrology equipment like our laser tracker. The tracker improves the position of these processes and it reduces the need of costly fixtures. Keep in mind that between nose and tail, we can only have an error of one millimeter or 0.04 inch. With our technology, it was even possible to reduce the assembly time of the sections by half. Now, let's go to an engine. The engines are made up by blades and bliss, as you can see here in this video. They have very complex geometry and unusual features as tiny cooling holes. Cooling holes have to be measured very precise. Keep in mind, the turb inside the turbine blade, you have temperatures of 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit. You really need cutting edge technology to measure them. Now, we talk about rocket science. Just over a week ago, SpaceX launched the first commercial space vehicle to dock with the International Space Station. Mission accomplished. The rocket was built by using our technologies like arms, trackers, and other CMMs. The rocket needed to be correctly aligned from top to bottom in order to meet the launch specification. Our equipment helped to ensure the alignment being more than 100 times better than the specs. Our technology is also being used for equipment that is traveling far beyond Earth orbit. The Mars rover is assembled out of more than 10,000 parts. All of them had to be quality inspected. It was required that all metrology devices had to use one software, and they choose our PCD software. Using one software, it was possible to guarantee high flexibility throughout the project because the entire rover is just a prototype. But it's a prototype that must work perfectly because you can't replace a faulty part 78 million miles away. Failure is not an option. But let's come back to Earth, especially to our energy needs. There's no doubt that we need 
to use more renewable energy. We have to make today's green, uh, green energy more cost effective. But there are some special challenges in manufacturing. Wind turbines contains over 8,000 components that have, they have to work correctly in the first time. There's a lot of stress on the parts and the cost of a field repair can go up to 10, 15% of the original cost of the turbine. We provide inspection solution for gear measurement, as you can see, and the parts can be assembled with laser trackers and portable arms. Another application. Not far from here in the desert, we helped solar en a solar energy company to think forward. Solar Reserve is installing a solar power generation facility that uses a molten salt technology that can generate power even after the sun goes down. 17,000 mirrors were installed on an area of 1,600 acres to concentrate the sun energy on a central tower that heats up to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Our expertise helped to determine the most efficient way how we install it, build it, and for sure align the thousands of mirrors for this project. Now, let's come to the most important contribution for our society. We have solutions that help the medical, or can help the medical in industry to improve their performance. Stents, which you see here now, have improved the quality of life for millions of people and saved lives as well. The expectations are that 3.4 million stents are implanted globally each year. We have thought forward about ways to inspect them. And we came up with the CT technology, the same technology which is used as well to, to, to look inside the human body. We are using the CT to inspect the inside surfaces so we can detect material errors where they should not be. By 2015, it is expected that 600,000 hips will be replaced and 1.4 million knee replacement will take place. Our measuring technology will verify these tolerances. Thinking forward is the new trend, I should say, is to customize the implants because there is no standard human being, human body, I should say. It is getting more important that the design is matching the real device. Now, we talked about data, accessing data, organizing data, and to formulate action out of it. We in Hexagon looking as well for synergy to look similar software tools like da uh, data point, uh, point cloud engine. And now today is possible for you to access your data anywhere in the world. We are bringing the data together in the form of meaningful graphical reports delivered to mobile devices. Now, multinational corporations can monitor production data and quality data no matter where the parts are made. So, distance is no longer an obstacle. You can have your data at your fingertips. That is our thinking forward. I appreciate to be here and I wish you a nice day going forward. All the best.
and gentlemen, please welcome Intergraph Process Power and Marine Division President, Gerhard Salinger. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Las Vegas. In the next couple of minutes, I'd like to show you two examples about how, how our software, along with other Hexagon solutions, can help our customers to design, build, and operate industrial plants in a more effective, safer, and more user-friendly way. The first example I want to show you is a large mining project in Chile. The second one is to show you an example what user friendliness in plant operations and data management means. So let's talk about the mining project first. The name of the mine is El Teniente, which means the lieutenant. And it is the, the largest copper underground mine in the whole world. It's operated and owned by Codelco, one of the largest mining companies in the world, and it produces the, the largest amount of copper on the planet. Codelco decided, due to the industry need for raw materials and copper specifically, to extend the mine by approximately doubling its output. What you see here is a picture of the existing part of that mine. And what they did, they decided to give this work to extend and double the output of this, to extend this plant to an Australian engineering firm named Sinclair Knight Mertz, or SKM, which is a leading company in that space. And SKM decided to do this project with our new 3D software Smart 3D, for which we developed a specific additional functionality for the mining industry. The mountains of Chile hold more than copper, coal, gold, and silver. The area also presents robust engineering challenges to design, build, and operate the mines that supply the world's demand for important metals. Chilean mining company Codelco turned to Australian engineering firm Sinclair Knight Mertz to execute projects that will considerably expand copper production for the next 50 years. Sinclair Knight Mertz, also known as SKM, in turn shows Intergraph solutions, including the Smart Plant 3D design platform, to execute the Andina and El Tiente mine expansion. The expansion involves 25 kilometers, or about 15 miles of conveyors, tunneling through mountainous terrain. Three times as many roads and access tunnels were designed. Robotically controlled trucks are used to deliver the mined copper ore. At its capacity, the Codelco expansion will provide 15,000 tons per hour of throughput. SKM used Intergraph solutions to develop the primary crushers, conveyor belts, and other systems needed to move the mined material from its origin to its storage stockpiling area. 11 kilometers or more than 10 miles of underground twin tunnels were designed to move both material and mine personnel safely throughout the year, including during the inclement winters in the Chilean mountains. A unique draining design controls mine water levels and a second transfer station continues the mined material on its journey to a stockpile. Then it is onto a refining facility and eventually on to become electrical wiring, motor parts, and a variety of other industrial items. Codelco, SKM, and Intergraph, meeting global demands even in the most challenging environments. Impressive, isn't it? The next example is about plant operations with using new technology for new interfaces, uh, user-friendly operations. Smart plant for owner operators, or short SPO, is Intergraph's solution for data and materials management, document management for owner operators to operate their plants more efficient and effective. 
We are very successful with this product, selling it in many, many countries and customers, having more than 500 installations worldwide with that te technology. What we recently did, we have extended its reach by cooperating with Leica Geosystems and their laser scanning technology, plus what is the real new and cool thing with that, I believe, is a product they have which is called True Station and True View. And this is doing photographs, 360 degree photographs, like uh, Bubble Street View, if you like, from, from the plant where the owner operators can work on their PC or even a handheld device and have access to this 360 degree photograph as if they would stand in the plant. And this is a petrochemical All plant in Australia. Facilities have tremendous challenges to keep up with information, particularly those with older existing facilities. Intergraph and Leica Geosystems have been working together to give owner operators new cost-effective options for managing facility information. It starts with a simple laser survey of the plant with scan station points denoted here by yellow triangles. With the resulting Leica TrueView, users can intuitively walk around a virtual model of the plant. They can easily navigate and see the equipment and facilities that are familiar to them. Equipment has been labeled with existing plant tag numbers. This allows all users to search, navigate, and perform the equivalent of an on-site plant visit without exposing themselves to the danger or time-consuming safety protocols of an actual plant visit. This is particularly useful for planning maintenance and modification projects, where a normal survey designer would have to physically endure the safety risk of entering the plant. When Intergraph and Leica Geosystems technology are integrated, even more work steps can be done in a safe and high-integrity environment. Plant owners now have an unprecedented ability to manage all of their plant information in the most cost-effective way possible today. Here you see the same true view inside of a smart plant owner operator's window, including the same equipment tags that we saw earlier. These equipment tags have been correlated automatically using Intergraph Fusion technology. Tagged equipment in the true view has been automatically associated with the other available technical plant information. This isn't limited to major equipment. Anything that has been tagged inside the true view has been correlated with everything that has been tagged in any of the documents, diagrams, or schematics that are available in the smart plant owner operator system. Plant personnel now have unprecedented access to the accurate plant information they need to plan their work or evaluate plant changes via an easy, intuitive interface to navigate and query the virtual plant from their desks. A broad array of information can be managed in this way, including technical service manuals, photographs, movies, or even some basic handwritten notes on a data sheet associated with the equipment. Because this plant information is now housed within the smart plant owner operator system, critical change management processes can be enforced to deliver the required plant information integrity. If a 3D model does exist, this too can be integrated, all in one place, creating a single source of truth for plant owner operators and an unsurpassed level of technology support for operations excellence. Can one of you imagine a better and more user-friendly interface than a 360 degrees photograph? I cannot. So, if you want to learn more about that, I invite you to go to two sessions which are covering these two um, themes. The one is today at, at 11 o'clock, I believe. No, it's 3.30, I'm sorry. And the other one is tomorrow at 11. So, um, I encourage you to do that because it goes much deeper and further than what I have, I will be able to show you here. Um, I wish you a good conference, a good day, and have fun. Thank you very much.
Welcome back. Ula Rowan. Thank you. These guys are truly brutal. We try to picture the picture of a high-tech technology company and they're banging at things and destroying it. Think forward. We're, we're approaching the close of this keynote speech and I would like to take an opportunity to focus on the future and what Hexagon is going to concentrate on over the next coming 12 months. So let's take actionable information and dissect it and look at the various pieces. First of all, we discussed accuracy. I think you've seen from the presentation today that it's very important that we keep the accuracy. We talk about sub-micron accuracy down to 0.3 microns. Now, a human hair is 10 microns. So that, does, that is really as fine as we can go. And then we discuss centimeter and millimeter accuracy when we come to larger objects using, for example, GPS satellites. So we're poised to continue to develop good sensoring technologies where we can measure in three or four dimensions. Secondly, we're going to spend money to develop more workflow oriented solutions. We need to bring down processing speeds. Doesn't matter if it's for a police department, for a manufacturing operation, or for an oil and gas company. We need to move faster, we need to move quicker, we need to deliver data earlier on. The third thing we need to focus on is to continue to develop the IT infrastructure for our products. We must be able to send, receive and compare information from various databases in order to reference, analyze and then finally taking action. The fourth item that we need to focus on is to reduce cost. And of course, I'm not meaning the cost of our product. I'm meaning the cost of capturing information. What I really mean is we need to bring uh, down the cost per operation so that we can really measure everything that's vital. Sometimes we need to do approximations. We need to bring out our technologies, whether it's CAD models, whether it's uh, volumetric models and so on, into the real world. The real world is going mobile and we can't stay using our designs, sitting in our offices or in our metrology laboratories. We need to go out into the real world and bring our technology there. So actionable information, if we try to wrap it up, is really about connecting as many people as possible into a network where we can collaborate and act on accurate information now. And I think that at the end of the day, it's, it's really about you. It's really about making you more efficient so that you can compete in the world market or serving your customer base or whatever it is you do using our technology. It's about making you more efficient. And it could be that you're designing things, you're improving things, you're keeping people safe, you detect, you predict. And uh, now we're gonna try a little funny thing. One thing for you to remember the hexagon advantage. If you feel underneath the seat of your chair, you should be able to find this ribbon. And I believe I need to find a new ribbon because mine is torn. So, this is the ribbon, it's blue on one side and green on one side. So if you hold it up like this, you twist the right end, 180 degrees, and then you put it together and you hold it like this looks terrible. Are yours any good? Ah, never mind. This is really the hexagon advantage. It doesn't look much holding it like this. But what we mean with this is we're all about capturing the real world, processing that data, 
feeding it into a digital model, could be a CAD model, could be a GIS system, or a reference model where you can display the real world using the digital world. What you do with that digital world is you alter it, you refine it, you redesign it, you do something better with it, and that will in turn lead to action. And hopefully that action will improve the real world. And then we start over and over again. So it's a constant flow of our interaction between the real world and the model world, back and forth, back and forth. And this is what we need to focus on. If we can bring down the processing speed, make more people understand what the real world is all about using the model world, then we're really developing good stuff. So on that note, I'd like to finish this session, and I really hope that you do take the opportunity to find good solutions for your business, for your organization, over these next three days. It's a tough world out there, and we've heard a lot of bad news recently, especially economic news with cutbacks and so on. But I'm a firm believer that if we can alter our business models and so on, we can grow and we can flourish in spite of a tough macroeconomy. So thank you everyone for listening today and thank you for coming. Thank you.